Hello everyone and welcome back to another anatomy tutorial where we are going to be talking about the anatomy of the femur bone. In this video we will talk about the anatomical structures of the femur bone of the horse and in the next video we will go through the comparative anatomy of the femur bone and look for the differences between the different animal species. Here we have the femur bone of the horse. As you can see, the femur bone is a long bone. That means it has two extremities. Here is the proximal extremity and this is the distal extremity here. And uh, between them we have the body or the shaft. The femur bone has four surfaces. You are looking at the cranial surface. This is the cranial surface. We have the caudal surface here. We have the lateral surface and the medial surface here and of course I will tell you exactly how to differentiate between these surfaces uh, in this video. So let's go directly to the proximal extremity and try to find the different structures here in the cranial view. Medially we can see the head of the femur bone. The head of the femur bone is located medially because it's, it has to articulate with the, uh, with the acetabulum, of course, of the pelvis to form the hip joint. This is the head of the femur bone. If we look exactly of uh, the head here in, in, in this area, we have a depression inside the uh, head of the femur bone called the fovea capitis or the fovea of the femur head. The fovea capitis is the insertion area of the ligamentum capitis osseus femoris or the ligament of the head of the femur bone which starts of course from the acetabular fossa of the acetabulum and inserts into the fovea of the head here. The head as we said before has smooth surface you know and in live animals of course there is articular cartilage to cover this head to uh, provide the articulation service with the acetabulum laterally in this area we have a very big projection as you can see here called the greater trochanta this is the greater trochanta which could be divided as you can see here in the lateral view we can see the greater trochanta divided into cranial part and the caudal part of the greater trochanta between them we have uh, this notch here so the greater trochanta is divided in the horse into cranial part and caudal part of the greater trochanta the greater trochanta in all animals are, you know, the insertion place for the gluteal muscles. If we move to the caudal view here in the proximal extremity, we can see from the greater trochanta here, this here extends toward the body, we have the trochanteric crest. Trochanteric crest here is straight like a elongated in the horse and media to it we have this big fossa called the trochanteric fossa the trochanteric fossa is the area of insertion of the small muscles of the hip joints here in the caudal view more medially we can see another tuberosity or tubercle or projection here called the lesser trochanter the lesser trochanter of the femur bone is located more caudomedially as you can see now we are moving this is here to uh, you know the media surface of the femur bone where we can see the lesser trochanta the lesser trochanta uh, trochanta is the insertion area of the iliac muscle and the psoas major muscle which are these two muscles are separated in the horse of course both of them insert to the lesser trochanta here. Let's go back to the caudal view. In the caudal view, more on the lateral side, we have another very big projection in the horse called the third trochanter, found or present just in the horse, the third trochanter. Now, 
Of course, the third trochanter is located on the lateral surface below the greater trochanter, as you can see here. And the <coughs> third trochanter in the horse is the insertion place of the superficial gluteal muscle. That means in the horse, the superficial gluteal muscle inserts to the third trochanter and the middle and the deep gluteal muscles to the greater tucanta. While in other animals, all gluteal muscles insert to the greater tucanta because they don't have the third tucanta. If we move to the caudal view one more time, again, this is the third tucanta, this is the lesser tucanta. In exactly somewhere here in this area, we have another projection called the bicipital to porosity. From the name, it's another insertion area of the biceps femoris muscle just in the horse. So that means the biceps muscle, the biceps femoris muscle in the horse has extra attachment to the caudal surface of the femur. Where exactly? Here where we have the bicipital to porosity. If we move down here in the cranial view, we can see the trochlea of the femur bone. This is the trochlear, femoral trochlea or the trochlea of the femur bone. The trochlea of the femur bone is there, of course, for the articulation with the, with the patella. So this is the patella. As you can see, the trochlea itself has two edges. This is the medial edge and this is the lateral edge. The medial one in the horse is bigger than the lateral one and located so here above the lateral uh, edge, as you can see here. The proximal part of the medial part of the trochlea forms what's called the trochlear tuberosity. This is the trochlear tuberosity. So the trochlea is there for the articulation with the patella. This is the patella. So um, let's talk about the patella. The patella in general has base. This is the base of the patella and this is the apex of the patella. So base, apex, two services, the cranial surface here or the rough surface for ligament attachment and the caudal articular service is here is a smooth service articular service for the articulation with the trochlea of the femur bone here the patella has also lateral border and medial border so if you look at the caudal smooth or articular service of the patella you can see that it's divided by a sagittal uh, ridge here in this area it's surrounded sagittal ridge divide the caudal surface of the patella into two parts a small lateral articular surface and big medial articular surface okay so let's Demos demonstrate how the patella articulates with the femur trochlea so the lateral lateral articular surface this small surface articulates with the lateral edge of the trochlea while the medial big articular surface articulates with the medial edge of the trochlea so this is the the base is always up while the apex this is the base and this is the apex. So apex is toward, of course, the tibial tuberosity later. So this is how the patella articulates with the trochlea of the femur bone. So the big surface toward the big medial edge of the trochlea, just like this. And this is how the patella moves on the trochlea. Okay? So, here as we have the patella in our hand, let me just tell you something that, you know, uh, the base of the patella, the insertion area of the four heads of the quadriceps femoris, they insert on the base, while from this rough surface here, 
Toward the tibial tuberosity in the horse, we have three ligaments, patellar ligaments. That one in the middle, called the middle patellar ligament, that one from the medial surface is the medial patellar ligament, and from the lateral surface, we have the lateral patellar ligament. Here, it's extremely important to mention that uh, the Trochlear tuberosity has a very, very important uh, function. So again, from this area here of the patella, the medial, the medial patella ligament can move above the trochlear tuberosity and form like a lock on this trochlea, and that's why the horse can sleep uh, uh, in standing position, you know, and it can stay stand, standing uh, with a relaxed hind limb. Once uh, the horse uh, wants, of course, he can lose or unlock this uh, ligament from here and of course they can walk or move. Okay, good, let's continue here. If we move to the caudal view, if we move to the caudal view, in the caudal view here we have uh, uh, two condyles. This is the lateral condyle and this is the medial condyle. Between them we have what's called the intercondylar fossa. On each side of the condyles here and there we have another projections here for example, called the epicondyles. So medially we have the medial epicondyle and laterally we have the lateral epicondyle. So they are there of course for muscle and ligament attachment. Again, lateral epicondyle, medial epicondyle. If you look into this area here, we can see that above the lateral condyle in this area here, we have another depression called the supracondylar fossa. So this is the supracondylar fossa. Next to it, we have the supracondylar crest. And on the crest here, we have in this area, the lateral supra, supracondylar tuberosity on the other side here we have another tuberosity on the medial side here the supracondylar the medial supracondylar tuberosity the supracondylar fossa is the origin of the superficial digital flexor muscle why the tuberosities here the supracondylar tuberosities are the origin of the two heads of the gastrocnemius muscle now if you look exactly at the lateral surface of the lateral condyle here we can see two fossae one is located here and the other one is located in this area here the cranial located one called the extensor fossa extensor fossa this is the origin of the long digital extensor muscle while the caudally located fossa called the bobletial fossa the bobletial fossa is the origin of the bobletial muscle now let me tell you uh, how to differentiate between the four surfaces of the femur bone so in general the cranial surface is smooth comparing to the caudal surface so in the caudal surface here as you can see is a rough surface is a rough surface and in the cranial view of course you can see the trochlea while in the caudal view you cannot see the trochlea but you can see the condyles the two condyles, the lateral and the medial condyle, and of course the intercondylar fossa. In the caudal view, the view where you can see or have access, you know, to the trochanteric fossa here. In the cranial view, you don't have or access or you cannot see the uh, trochanteric fossa which is located caudally here.
Uh, now let's uh, look how to differentiate between the medial and the lateral surfaces. In this case, let's start with the lateral surface of the femur bone. Uh, the lateral surface is the surface where you can find the greater trochanter, the third trochanter in the horse, and of course here the supracondylar fossa. While the, the medial view, you can see the head of the femur bone. So if you can, if you're looking into uh, this service, uh, you know, where you, you can find the head, it's a media service or below the head, we, we, we have also this small projection called the lesser trochanta. If you cannot see the head at all, like in this view, that means you are looking at the lateral view, lateral view of the femur bone where you can find the greater trochanta which is divided in the horse here into uh, caudal and cranial part and of course it's very easy in the horse because of the third trochanter so the third trochanter is located on the lateral surface and now help me to find out uh, you know which pawn do we have in our hand it's the right or the left pawn in this case what you have to do all the time is to look at the caudal surface or of the femur bone is the service again where you can find distally the two condyles so if you're looking at the caudal service and now look for the head the head is located medially because it has to articulate with that with that stabulum of the pelvis so that means medially that this is the midline and this bone is located right to the midline so that means this is the right femur bone or another you know method is just you know look at the caudal surface of the femur bone and uh, try to find the greater trochanta or in this case the third trochanta if they are located right to the bone that means this is the right bone if they are located you know left that means this is the left bone